Today we talk meditation, a very dear topic to me. Oh, is meditation overrated? Hello dear friends, if you're new here consider subscribing. Every week we do health tips, tricks and hack videos and Mythbuster videos just like this one. As always, these videos have three sections. The subject, the facts, figures and the research and the long awaited the conclusion of the verdict of whether this is a myth or a fact. When we talk about meditation, you must be thinking about a monk sitting in a faraway solitary mountain counting the number of the beads of a necklace. Yes, this is meditation too. However, this is an extreme version of meditation. Despite the popularity, a lot of us have lost our ways in terms of understanding what meditation actually is. Some supposedly meditation techniques focus on concentrating on an item or an element. Others focus on techniques which try to bring you self-satisfaction or peace in your mind. Both are substitutes to meditation and focus on stopping all incessant thoughts in your mind. This is a state that you could never achieve. We're never going to stop the number of thoughts that are going to be flooded to our mind. So if this is not meditation, what is? Meditation is a state of thoughtless awareness. It's a state that you would be in, not an activity that you'd be doing. So you could be in a state of thoughtless awareness even if you are at work or sitting in a yoga pose trying to meditate. So before we move ahead, we want to get one thing out of the way. Meditation is not concentration or exercises focused on posture and breathing doesn't necessarily translate to meditation. Yes, these things could supplement the state of thoughtless awareness. However, they're not directly what meditation is. So with all that said, let's dive in and figure out whether meditation is overrated by figuring out the facts, the figures and the research associated with meditation. Number one, time consuming. One of the reasons that we think meditation is overrated is because it consumes time on a state where we do nothing. From an environmental perspective, we're focused to either multitask or get more and more stuff done on a daily basis. So when we talk about sitting down on a couch and thinking about your thoughts, that just does not resonate with us. Coupled with that, with faster delivery times and instant gratification that you get from social media, we all move away from the element of focusing on our thoughts to artificial senses of satisfaction. So if we are not able to build a habit and dedicate a significant amount of time to our mind, we'll never see the benefits. And majority of the problem is we've tried for a short amount of time and then because those benefits aren't very visible, we move away from thinking that meditation is overrated and there's no benefits. Number two, intangible. Just like with time consumption, the toughest part about this is, as I mentioned before, is it's not visible. It's not like going to the gym and seeing how your body tones up. With mind, you cannot see that physically in front of you. To stop and take a breather, I'd like to share a personal story. I was taught how to meditate when I was 14 by my mom. Well, as with all teenagers, I thought I knew better and this is just some sort of bullshit. And never actually gave it the time. Funny enough, however, only after about six years when I actually got into the real life did I understand that meditation might be beneficial and only a year and a half ago did I actually start to see actual benefits of it. Talking about personal experience, number three, anger management. I used to be a person who was quick to anger and was not in control of majority of my emotions. But with meditation over the course of the last few years, being able to find a technique and a tool to control those emotions helped help me open up to more opportunities and longer lasting relationships. Number four, meditation and money making. Meditation, just like minimalism, veganism, most of other things that are in the current industry has been taken up as a trend. That naturally translates to opportunities for commercial gain. Now, if you research for meditation, you probably get this video along with other millions and thousands of applications, websites, blogs talking about what meditation is and what meditation techniques are. With majority of these sources focused on the commercial aspect of things. And therefore, because those techniques aren't addressing the actual core of meditation, it doesn't translate to the actual benefits meditation can bring them. Thus, translating to a thought that meditation is overrated. Number five, stress management. Majority of the research which we've linked down below have shown that meditation is able to assist you with stress management. Stress is an inherent part of our lives. We're never going to be able to completely eliminate it, we'll only be able to manage it. If meditation is going to be an effective tool to manage stress, which is linked with other health disorders such as diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, even cancer in certain instances, shouldn't we try it? But 
how does meditation actually help you manage your stress? The idea is that meditation allows you to sort and differentiate what requires your attention, energy and emotion. Just think, if you're able to distinguish this across two thoughts, what your experience with anxiety and stress would be. As the biggest problem that we have is that we don't have the space in our minds to differentiate and look at these thoughts or emotions from different perspectives. What meditation would do is create this space, which by creating this space helps us organize and prioritize the thoughts that actually require our attention. Number six, increase in productivity. I'm not gonna continue to ramble on, this one's simple. If you could focus and concentrate on one particular thing for, an, for a required amount of time, the ability for you to get from A to Z would be quicker. I think it refers to the Pomodoro's law. However, if you could couple that with consistent and focused attention, you can only find ways to even further reduce the amount of time spent on a particular task, thus becoming productive. Number seven, improvements in relationship and general happiness. Meditation will help you differentiate and distinguish emotions and differentiate fact from emotion as well. Because majority of the time, the pursuit of happiness has pursuit in it. What meditation would allow you to do is figure out that happiness isn't about chasing it, but that it's just right here. It's about about what's around you and what you absorb and differentiate as happiness for you. Because majority of the time we chase and we search for happiness in the wrong place. And the impermanent nature of human beings to crave for more and for more and for more results in the lack of or the chase or the pursuit of happiness. I mean, that's proven from economics to psychology, infinite wants and finite resources to psychology's paradox of desire. And other benefits of meditation range from sleeping better, boosting your confidence and self-esteem, managing cravings, and many more. Last but not least, number eight. Meditation is the magic bullet. We've talked about a lot of benefits that meditation brings in and why meditation might be considered overrated. But before we come to a conclusion, there's one thing that I wanna get across. Meditation isn't a magic bullet. It's not one thing that'll help you become a better version of yourself, be more productive, have amazing relationships, manage your stress better. All these things come to you with a holistic life experience. That would mean that you treat your body well, that you treat your mind well, and you fuel your body well. So with all that said, do you think we're ready to come to a conclusion now? Is meditation overrated? No, meditation isn't overrated. It becomes overrated when you place an utmost amount of reliance on meditation to give you a solution across all these challenges that you have on a daily basis, whether it may be stress management or productivity. But the right thing to do is manage and introduce meditation with a consistent habit, a effective meditation technique and a holistic life approach which fills your body with an effective nutrition plan and a sustainable physical activity. With all that said, that's it for this video. If you found this video useful, comment, like and share and we'll see you on the next video.